So today we're going to be mixing together uh, a mixture of compounds and trying to isolate each of them by using their different solubilities. And in this compound that we are working with, or this mixture of compounds, is called panacetin A. That's the one unknown that we're using today. So because certain compounds have different solubilities in uh, different solvents, we are going to be starting by eliminating the easiest one, sucrose. Then we're going to use a little bit of acid-based chemistry to remove the second one, acetyl salicylic acid. And then we're going to use uh, this separation of the last two to isolate our unknown and then find our melting point of that unknown in order to uh, figure out exactly what it is from a list of three possibilities. And you can look those up in your lab manual. But uh, what we're going to start with today uh, is the isolation of the sucrose. And that's going to happen by taking um, this compound uh, or a mixture of compounds and put it into putting it into the Erlenmeyer flask here with a little bit of DCM. So I have 3.001 grams of this that I weighed out. We're going to need about 60 milliliters <coughs> of this DCM. And so. And then we're going to take it and we're going to place it in this Erlenmeyer flask, trying to keep it in the hood. The fumes in particular are pretty carcinogenic. It's very volatile. Low boiling point too. And by mixing this together, we're going to actually isolate all of the sucrose by having it remain in solution um, as a precipitate. The other compounds will easily dissolve into this DCM. So it looks like we have some precipitate left over at the bottom that is not dissolving, and that's going to be our sucrose. So the way that we're going to isolate that is we're going to take a little bit of filter paper, which I have pre-weighed here, 0 0.820 grams total. And I'm going to fold that in half once and then fold that in half again. And now that I've folded it in half twice, I'm going to take one of the sides and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to fold it and score it back. And that's going to create a nice little filter for it. So that filter is going to go in the middle of this funnel, which is quite large. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently pour this mixture through this filter, making sure that I always land all of the solution in the filter. If it goes past the filter, then it defeats the whole purpose of the filter. So we have all of the sugar right here, and that's quite a bit actually. And we want to keep as much as we, as we can of that. So I'm going to add another 20 milliliters. Oh, that's going to work pretty well. So still a bit of sugar in here. One thing you could do is you could uh, weigh this once it dries, and then you could clean it out, and then once it dries again, you could weigh it, and you could see whatever leftover residue there is in here, if you're trying to figure out how much mass of sucrose there is. We'll be fine with an approximation today. Um, just going to wait for this filter paper to dry, and the sucrose that's in there is what we'll use as our mass. But good to note that you lost some residue here loss is going to happen regardless. All right, so this appears to be done filtering. And this will be our sucrose. We'll leave that to dry on a watch glass. Let's we'll grab a watch glass real quick. Don't want to leave it just sitting on the counter or bench top. It's not safe at all. And we'll leave this over in the corner so that it can evaporate without potentially creating any fumes to breathe. All right, so next, we gotta do our separation. 
and separations. I actually love separations. They're really fun. Uh, but it's important to make sure that before you do your separation, you remember which of the layers you're trying to collect. So when you're trying to collect these layers, um, you wanna remember that the more dense solution is gonna end up on the bottom. And the more dense solution in this case is going to be the chlorinated solvent that we're using, DCM. DCM is extremely uh, dense compared to, let's say, water, which is gonna be the base of our other uh, solution that we're using to wash these compounds and dissolve the uh, acetyl salicylic acid. Um, this is gonna act as a sort of a weak base. It's going to take some of the um, weak acid protons off of that acetyl salicylic acid and allow us to um, fully ionize it uh, and get it into solution. So what we're gonna do first is just knowing that the DCM is gonna end up on the bottom. We're gonna add that in. That's pretty close. With these separations, you should get pretty close, but most of the time it doesn't matter too much if it's a milliliter off or something like that. Now as in the past, when you do separations with DCM, it seems very volatile and it will uh, create a lot of off gas. So you want to definitely, as you shake this solution, be burping your separatory funnel regularly. Otherwise pressure will build up and you'll have a huge mess. Also the warmth of your hand will definitely get it evaporating. So definitely something to keep in mind. Now we have two layers here. So the bottom layer is going to contain our unknown, and the top layer is going to contain our acetyl salicylic acid because it uh, basically was deprotonated by the bicarbonate and became more polar and ended up in the aqueous phase. And I'm, for now, I'm just going to go grab or uh, pre weigh one of these flasks in order to get the DCM and evaporate it. So I'm going to Go do that real quick. Perfect. So, got that Erlenmeyer flask pre-weighed. And I'm going to pull out this organic layer. Now, if you hadn't before, make sure that you always take out the stopper. That can cause bubbles to kind of push their way through the uh, stopcock here. No good. And going to just drain this until all the bottom layer is in the flask. So once I'm done with the uh, DCM and I drain the DCM out, which I'm going to wash a few more times with the bicarbonate, I'm going to take this flask and collect our portions of the aqueous layer. So I'm going to make sure I label it appropriately. And drain it into here. Now I'm going to be doing this a couple times, so you want to make sure that you also get a large enough flask. When we add acid to it, it might bubble over, and so you don't want to be working with a 125 here. You want as much room as you can. I always prefer beakers, anyways. All right. So next. Uh, make sure we close the stopcock. That's like a huge common rookie mistake. And I'm going to place the filter, put the funnel back on. And I'm going to pour the organic portion in. And I'm going to add some more of this bicarbonate, another 25 milliliters.
we're going to do now is take the PCM and place it in a water bath to evaporate. You want to make sure that the water bath is not too full. You want this thing to sit like uh, without you know, tipping over um, in the warm water bath, but DCM actually has a pretty low boiling point, um, something like 36 degrees Celsius. And you can basically just sit it here, let it evaporate, and eventually you'll be left over with the uh, unknown residue, which will then recrystallize, which will not be in the movie today, but it's a pretty easy process. Basically, you just take it up in a small amount of boiling water until it fully dissolves, and then you allow it to fall out of solution as it cools. Not too bad. Then you filter it, and that is that. What we're gonna be doing first is we're going to be taking a little of this hydrochloric acid and adding it to the solution. But even before that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you real quick a little bit of pH paper with our unknown or our acetyl salicylic acid. And uh, the solution here we have with the bicarbonate is going to be a little bit basic. It's gonna show up here from this color. All right, so once the solution becomes a little bit more acidic, um, we're gonna see the acetyl salicylic acid fallout solution because we're gonna be protonating that uh, carboxylic acid. So I'm gonna add slowly some of this six molar hydrochloric acid. Make sure you use different pipettes. Don't want any contamination. A little bit more acidic. Starting to get a little bit of the precipitate here, as you can see. We we'll get a little bit of the solution, see where we're at pH wise. Oh, yeah, nice and acidic. By a little bit, I mean kind of a lot. <laughs> Looks kind of crystalline, it's shiny, but it's also foamy. It's pretty weird texture here, actually. And we'll see what the new pH is. Oh yeah, that's super, super acidic. So as you can see, you have a little bit of acetyl salicylic acid. It's just formed a sort of layer on the top there. Give this a little bit of a chill for a couple minutes before we filter it. So the organic solution, DCM, boiled off pretty quickly. And at this point, it's bone dry. I can turn off the heat here. But because I pre-weighed this flask, I can actually take the mass of this flask now and see exactly how much of the product I produced. Um, and that's going to be our organic unknown. Now normally, under most circumstances, I would uh, recrystallize this on camera, but today I'm just gonna cut that out and I'll show you a recrystallization in the future. So we've let this chill out for a second. The acetyl salicylic acid fell out of solution in this uh, very, very acidic aqueous solution due to the fact that you're protonating the carboxylic acid on the acetyl salicylic acid, creating um, uh, going from the salicylate to the, um, the protonated carboxylic acid. And you are going to take this and go through the usual steps to filter it with the Buchner filter. We have this vacuum filter apparatus set up. Just gotta flip the switch and 
take a little bit of water to prime the filter. You want to make sure you get good suction to the bottom of that Newton filter. And then from here, I'm going to just try to get as much of that solid into the filter as possible. Thankfully, a lot of it's floating on the surface, so it's actually pretty easy to pour it in there. Looks nice and shiny too, good crystalline material. Excellent work. Remember, you always want to use a really insoluble solution to do any kind of rinsing. filtrate carefully because it's full of hydrochloric acid, but um, because this is uh, dissolved in water, or rather this was floating in water, and water is just really sticky, it's good to leave this on the pump, that is, uh, for at least 10 minutes or so, just to make sure that your product gets as much water removed as possible so you can get a more accurate weight. Otherwise, the water can greatly affect how much the product will weigh um, and just make your yield inaccurate. You don't want that, right? Nobody wants that. Alright. Well, for now, I'm going to actually shut this off. i got to go do something else. But, um, make sure you get all the information uh, during the post lab session. And, I'll see you next week. Stop filming your pep speak. I'm gonna, uh, I'll put my ads to the very end. Right. <laughs> Just gotta get through this.